somewhere down in Louisiana, but they aren't listening to this game. And it's a very interesting, special story that Stefan LaForest grew up in a silent household. His parents are deaf, and so is his brother, Eric. And he's, through the years, you know, used a lot of sign language. In fact, he will sign to his parents or his relatives uh, during a game uh, to send them messages. I'm sure they might be reading the closed captioning right now, so right. we send uh, our best to the family of Stefan LaForce. And that shows the strength that he has, not only as a football player, but just as a human being. Everything against them. As a family where nobody's able to hear, and you can, he never use the excuse that that's the reason why I can't do this, I can't do that. He never used his size as an excuse. He always went out there and played football, and he made the most of every opportunity he had, and that's a credit not only to him, but to his parents, who, who've definitely shown him how to grow up and be a man and step up and do what is right, and he, he's definitely proven that today. He has certainly accepted a lot of challenges, and uh, early in this ball game, he must have wondered, uh, be, being a quarterback in the Canadian Football League, all he saw were big guys in blue jerseys. Hitting them quite a bit over and over and over. <laughs> Establish the running game as well here in this second half. And that's what they've been doing. They stay with their game plan. A lot of credit to offensive coordinator Shap Delaney of staying with the game plan, not getting into a panic mode. He's been in this situation more than once when a quarterback goes down and another guy comes in and you're unsure how he's going to be. Give the guy time to get his feet wet, understand the offense. Things slow down some for a quarterback, and he's able to establish himself. And that's giving the ball to Tyler Ebell. Let him do the work. He's, he's a workhorse for you. He knows how to run the football. And it's a nice game first down. Seven up again for the Argo defense. Uh, linebackers retreat. LaFours dodging, trying to dodge. And he's down again. Sacked. Jonathan Brown, fifth sack for the Argos today. Jonathan Brown fighting through the offensive line to get the sack, but a lot of credit goes to the guys in the secondary. There's no one open for Stephon Flores, the Forest, to get the ball to. He's got to hold on to it. He's looking first read, second read. By that time, Jonathan Brown is right in there on him, and he comes away with the sack. So credit not only Jonathan Brown, but that defensive secondary staying with those receivers. Again, that offensive line for Edmonton. Uh, some key figures missing. Tim Baker not starting. He's been a constant presence in that lineup with Trey Darjilic starting the import. Second and long, very long. LaFleurs has to run. Brought down. And the Eskimo punt team will come out and kick this ball away. And with that sack on first down, it played right into what Toronto wants you to do. Put you in second and long. They're going to drop eight, nine guys into the secondary. Not many holes are going to be open. Stefan LaFleurs had to take the ball and run, but to get a first down from 17 yards away is tough to do. Now they have to come in and kick the ball back to Toronto. Again, Dominic Dorsey is back. If you just joined us, he took one back 68 yards. This is blocked, and this is six. Easy this touchdown. is a touchdown. Byron Parker. Sean Fleming punt and Parker's just waiting for it to come down he knows there's nobody around him it's a matter of just catching the ball and going in for the touchdown and Sean Fleming no idea what happened he thought he had plenty of time to get the ball off all of a sudden it's blocked going the other way what a day for special teams for the Toronto Argonauts Dominic Dorsey earlier brought one back this time a block. Byron Parker has another touchdown. This one was like butter. 23-8. Think you can talk football?